Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. AMD have officially announced FSR 4 is in the works, and not only that, it is going to be fully based on AI. So the goals here seem to be to improve image quality, maximize power efficiency, as well as performance. And further to this, the team have already been working on this for almost about a year. Now, I think we can all agree that FSR has been a really big positive for gamers as well as games developers. Basically, while DLSS may have the edge in quality, I'll leave you to debate that in the comments below, ultimately it only works on RTX 20 cards, and of course when we're talking about frame generation it requires RTX 40 and so on. But if you have FSR, it will work on Pascal, it will work on RTX GPUs, it will work on AMD cards, and also consoles. So that has definitely been a really just awesome thing, I think. But according to an interview with um, Jack Hyun, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, uh, Tom Hardware actually um, managed to sit down with him and get some details regarding AMD's plans going forward. Now, I'm going to read this out verbatim, and also you can see it on screen. However, the comments are not 100% because basically they cleaned up the audio. Um, because when you're speaking to someone, you know, there's pauses and so on, or maybe they misspeak. So this is essentially a slightly... Uh, tweaked version of the interview. Anyway, Jack said, on the handheld side, my number one priority is battery life. He then goes on to mention that Asus ROG Ally or Lenovo, the battery life is the big problem. So if you're playing a game like Wukong, you only get around 60 minutes of battery life, but ultimately he wants to play for several hours at a time. And this is where things like frame generation interpolation comes in. FSR 2 and 3 were analytical based generation. It was filter based, but what we... And we did that because we wanted something to the market really fast. But th they also said, well, this is not where the future is. So now they've completely pivoted the team around 9 to 12 months ago to get AI-based. So now we're going AI-based frame generation, frame interpolation. And the idea is increased efficiency to maximize battery life. And we could, let's say, lock to 30 frames a second, 35 frames a second. But my number one goal is to maximize battery life, which I think is the biggest complaint. I read the returns too from the retailer where people want to be able to play these games, end quote. Now, unfortunately, you will notice a big elephant in the room. I'll give you a second. <laughs> Can you guess? That's right. There was no comment exactly how it is going to work. Now, if you take a peek on an at an official AMD announcement um, regarding AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2, this is for a Ryzen AI 300 series. It's worth noting though that at this point it's still a preview, so it's a technical preview driver, but you can see a few benchmarks here. So for example, um, when you have um, all of this technology enabled at 1080p high preset, you'll see for example, Far Cry goes from 68 frames a second up to 106, F1 23 from 65 to 105, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, right this moment, um, from what Tom's hardware have stated, they don't believe it is going to require um, an NPU to run this, but they haven't got official confirmation from AMD. And it's worth noting that just looking historically on what AMD have done with FSR, they've wanted it to run on a wide range of GPUs. Further to this, if we look at, let's say, Intel's XESS, there are a couple of different modes. Essentially, if you have a ARC-based GPU, and also I'm presuming Battle Mage is going to have pretty much the same thing for its future versions of XESS, um, you have XMX modes. So basically, if you're running XESS on an Intel GPU, it will essentially, that is ones that supports, um, you know, technology obviously then it can use these matrix extensions but if you're running an amd gpu or an older intel gpu it will then fall back to dp4a so essentially it will have different modes based on the configuration of the hardware so is this what amd are going to be doing with fsr4 so obviously um rdna4 is coming up and it's going to be interesting to see what exactly has changed. Obviously, there's a lot of rumors, but a rumor does not necessarily equate to all of the technical details. And of course, the rumors could also be wrong. 
and naturally we are also expecting a lot of big changes for future AMD GPUs. As I've mentioned previously, I'm hearing that there's going to be big changes to the way matrix operations are going to be running on RDNA 5, but that's slightly out of the scope of this video. So it's going to be very interesting to me to see what AMD does here, and also, presumably, AMD would not want FSR to suddenly not run on competitor hardware anyway. So the question is, let's say you have, let's just hypothetically say you've got an RTX 4080. Let's just say you've got 4080. Would FSR 4 be able to utilize tensor cores? I mean, theoretically, it should be able to. Maybe AMD will do that. Maybe there's going to be some type of... Um, a fallback layer where it can do that on uh, NVIDIA GPUs and for uh, AMD APUs it will use um, the NPU. I also wonder what other changes we're going to see FSR 4 bring to the table because I'm sure it's not just going to be a case of well it does the same thing only AI helps it do it faster. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of additional features for FSR 4. I haven't personally heard anything right now, so I'll try to do a little bit of digging. But I'm going to be very excited, frankly, to see what FSR 4 can also bring. It's also going to be very interesting to see how Sony's PSSR differs from FSR 4. Now, Sony have certainly been working on a lot of upscaling stuff internally. Um, several months ago, I was talking about a presentation that uh, Sony uploaded on one of its official channels, talking about um, upscaling for um, ray tracing and a bunch of other stuff that they've been kind of working on. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that they simply had not you know, discussed in public. So it's very likely that some of the technology at the very least was just kind of being pioneered by Sony. So it's going to be interesting to see if any of that technology does make it into FSR 4 or whether it's uh, AMD's own kind of separate baby. But uh, again, I am looking forward to seeing what, you know, the future brings. Um, I wouldn't be surprised also if we start hearing some rumors about DLSS 4. Like I've already heard some murmurs from a couple of people regarding DLSS 4, but at the end of the day, I don't necessarily know if I trust anything at this stage. But yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see what the next generation of upscaling solutions bring. But that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.